Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, oh, where? Oh, hello, and welcome to Group Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone. 3D printing, something that has become very popular over the last couple of years. And if you're brand new to the hobby, there's no shortage of different 3D printers to take a look at. If you're looking for something in the budget range, man, you're gonna be inundated with all different kinds of options. And it's really hard to figure out where to put your money, especially if you're money conscious. What is the best 3D printer on the market for beginners in the budget category? That's a big question and probably very controversial. Luckily, we have a time machine that will erase any kind of hate that we might get thrown our way in this video. Now, what is gonna be the focus of this particular video today? Well, my friends, that goes to the King Room KPS3. And viewers of the show know that uh, I already have one of these buggers, and this is actually the second one that we are now opening. And in this video, what we're gonna be doing is comparing the two, looking at them to see if there's any consistent issues between the two of them, and if there's anything we need to do right out of the box to get this thing printing amazingly. Groovers, let's go ahead and get down to our workbench and open up our package. And there we have it, our King Room 3D printer all complete. It was pretty simple to put together, wasn't it? The only thing we need to do now is just some small adjustments. The first thing we need to do is make sure this little gantry here is nice and tight. And for the most part it is, but the way we adjust it is with this wrench here. On the back, there's a little eccentric nut. By moving our wrench to the left, we can make it a little bit tighter. By moving it to the right, we will actually make it looser. Yes, it's the opposite. Not lefty loosey, righty tidy, the exact opposite. Now that we got that all complete, we can go ahead and put our little filament here on the top. Now, I'm not a big fan of the filament holder, you know that. I find that when the filament gets down to this kind of level, that's that uh, last little quarter, it tends to roll off those rollers and that can destroy the print. And what's the point, right? So anyway, link in the description to this better filament holder, print it. Yeah, but the, one of the first things you do, I really recommend that one. Okay, now that we've got our filament in place, we got this tightened up, we need to move on to our build plate. This is gonna take a little bit more work, but trust me, we can do it together. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little hands, we're gonna go around the back here, and we're gonna just take the motor and we're gonna turn it. By turning it left, we are going to eventually lower it, and you'll hear that little Z switch on the side hit that silver bolt. Once it does, you'll know that your printer has hit the Z level. That's a sweet little clicky. Oh yes, we love the click. Now the important thing about this is we need to make sure that when we hear that click, that our needle is not digging into the bed. This is super important, really important. Make sure that the, when you hear the click, that the needle is not there. The way that we do this eventually is with this little uh, feeler gauge. This feeler gauge goes between the needle and the bed, and if you can put it between there, you're 100%. But we're not there yet, you're rushing. And by adjusting that screw, we can raise the nozzle up and down on our build plate. Okay, now that we know that our nozzle is not gonna dig right into our build plate, it's time to turn our 3D printer on. Let's do it. That was a little bit anticlimactic, I know, but trust me, it's uh, turning on and now we have our little screen here. The first thing we need to do is preheat the machine. Let's go ahead and do that. We go over to preheat and we are going to turn it up to, let's do 180. Then we're gonna take our bed, we're gonna turn it up to 60. The reason why we're preheating our 3D printer before we level everything out is because, well, we're leveling it. And what happens when you tend to heat things up? They expand and when they get cold, they tend to contract. So if we were to do our leveling when it's cold and then it gets heated again, well, that leveling is gonna be off. So we need to make sure that this is preheated before we do any leveling. And now that it is, let's get to the pre-leveling part. At the main menu, we go to leveling, and then we go to point one. Ooh, she's moving. And she stopped. Now, why did she stop? She stopped because she's now officially at point one. 
we are going to take that feeler gauge that we were talking about earlier, and we're going to feel things out. Well, actually, we're going to put this little piece of metal here between the nozzle and the bed. This particular gauge that I'm using here today is measuring at 0 .0015 or 0 0.04 millimeters. Now, let's go ahead and take our little feeler gauge here and see if it goes between the needle and the bed. And it does! That's awesome! Now, we're actually not just looking for it to go between the needle and the bed. We want there to be just a little bit of friction, just a little tiny bit of pull, like a young child trying to pull on your thumb or finger before you let that thing go. To get that grip, we need to adjust the bed, and we do that by these little yellow knobs here. Moving it to the left will tighten the bed, which will bring the bed further away from the nozzle. Moving it to the right will have the opposite effect. Once we feel that little bit of pull, okay. All right, that feels pretty good. Now we can move on to our second point. This will now raise up again, move it over, and then drop down. There we go. So now with this one. Okay, now we're all level, or should be all level. The next thing we need to do is load our filament. It's actually pretty easy to do. Let's go over to our screen, go to settings, Go to motor off and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our filament here bring her down open her up and feed her into the extruder now what i'm doing here is pushing a little bit of filament through to make sure that yes we are extruding now we're going to raise everything up here by going back going to move and then raising up our Z axis, just like these. Okay, now that we've moved that little blob, we can print our first print. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, let's see what we have in our little printer menu. Hmm, a food clip or a guardian. I think the guardian, if I remember correctly, is an extruder knob, which I really don't need another one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and try this food clip. We're off to the races. Let's see how this thing prints. And there we go, our first print all complete. Now I've gone ahead and turned off my printer, but typically you don't have to do this. You can just go back over to that little motor off function and that should work just fine. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull the little bed forward here, just ever so slightly. And we're gonna just take the magnetic mat off like so. Now we can take a little look around this ring here around our print to see if it did pretty well. And actually it looks really level. And this print does look pretty good too. I'll show a little close up of it right now. See, it's so pretty. All right, now how do we take this print off the bed? It's actually very simple. If you've ever been to a stadium, it just gotta do the way just like these. And the print will actually pretty much come right off. Now, uh, you do want to avoid touching the surface of your printer bed. You don't want the oils from your hands ruining the adhesion of the plastic going onto the bed. Let's go ahead and just put this back on there. And we can take a look at our clip here. Yeah, it looks really good. And again, this is just right out of the box. We haven't done anything in our slicer settings. I haven't done any adjustments on the printer at all. I mean, this is literally right out of the box. And this is the kind of print quality that I'm saying is really, really awesome. You know, some other printers, to get this kind of quality, you actually have to do a lot of upgrades. And being that you can get this just right out of the box, it really does impress me. 
as I said earlier, I have two of these printers. One being Midas, and this one, I'm not too sure exactly what I'm going to name him just yet. Maybe Caesar. But the print quality of the other one that I have has been really good too. There has been some issues though, and I want to be real here for a moment. I'm not sponsored in any way, and my impressions of these machines are 100% mine. But I want to be transparent as possible. While I really do like this machine, and I got my best check cube ever uh, from this machine, actually, not this one, my other one, right out of the box, I have to say, the earlier versions of this printer in particular definitely had a few more issues with power supplies and things. At least, that's what's been reported to me in the different Facebook groups that I was doing my research in. These newer ones don't seem to have any of those problems. However, there is still some issues with the alignment between the X and Y axis. Uh, also, there seems to be issues with fan noise. My first printer, the Midas printer, has a big issue with the fan, and it was actually one of the main reasons I reached out to King Rune to see if this was a warranty issue. They advised me to return that printer, uh, but um, I think I'm just going to keep it and switch out the fan. It's really not that big of a deal. Now, that being said, while doing my research, it seems like quality control was a little bit of a problem for King Rune, especially earlier on with the first and second generation of these printers. The rails had some issues. Again, there were some power problems and things like that. With the later model, in particular, this model here, this is the third iteration, and they're actually releasing the fourth one, I believe, in just a couple of months, if not already. Um, these issues have been, for the most part, ironed out. So, in a nutshell, while this machine isn't necessarily perfect in every single aspect, it is definitely the best bang for your buck on the market. I have to say that. I've played with a lot of different platforms, I've played with a lot of Creality platforms, but this guy right here, this guy, by far, I mean, four bolts and we're printing, guys. I mean, we can print flexible filaments right out of the box without any extruder, hot end, or board upgrades. That's incredibly awesome. And that's why I have to recommend this printer for everyone out there who's looking to get into the 3D printing world and wants something that's not only reliable, but that pretty much works right out the box, as you've seen right here in this video. All right, Groovers, I had a really good time reviewing the KPS3 with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future, including some really awesome 3D printing stuff that isn't out there yet. Want to help the channel grow and build some cool stuff too? Check out GroupBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really awesome models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. Caesar? No. Caligula. Hypatia!